listening on More FM, welcome, welcome. I'm glad that you are here this morning to worship and the Lord say thank you and his blessings in store. Stand and thank the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come once more into your house and we say thank you for spirit our life to see another, another blessed Sabbath holy day of rest. As we come, we ask of you, Father, to be with each and every one of us. And we know that your blessing is in store. Thank you for life, for strength, for saving grace. Well, give us a form of pray. In your precious name, amen. To God be the glory. So love he the world that he gave us his son. Three, four, one. To God be the glory, great things he had done. So love he the world that he gave us his son. Who yielded his life and atonement for sin and opened a life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he has done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of love to every believer. The promise of God, the voiceless offender who truly believed that woman from Jesus, a pardon received. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth air his voice. Praise the Lord. Us, great things he has done, and great or rejoicing to Jesus the Son, but your and higher and greater will be the wonder of transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord. glory because he had safely brought us through another week. That's 384. Let us now a blessing seek waiting in his courts today. 384. Safely through another week. God has brought us on our way. Let us now a blessing seek waiting in his courts today. Day of all the week of death, emblem of eternal rest. Day of all the week of death, emblem of eternal rest. While we seek supplies of grace through the 
tell Redeemer's name. Show thy reconciling face. Take away our sin and shame. No more world he can set free. May we rest to stay in peace. No more world he can set free. May we rest to stay in peace. When the morn shall bid us rise, may we feel thy presence near. May thy glory meet our eyes while we in thy house appear. Hear a word, a sword and says, oh, for everlasting peace. Hear a word, a sword and says, oh, for everlasting peace. May the gospel joyful sound conquer sin and comfort says. Make the fruits of grace abound. Bring relief to all complaints. Let's stay on our Sabbath speed till we rise to reign with thee. Let's stay on our Sabbath speed till we rise to reign with thee. The church has one foundation, three, four, eight. It's Jesus Christ, her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word, three, forty-eight. The church has one foundation, this Jesus Christ, our Lord, she is this new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought to be his holy bride with his own blood. Father, and for her life he died. He left from every nation, yet one or all the earth. Her charter was salvation, God, Lord,
three five. Sorry, six two five. I am pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Higher. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm every day. Still praying as I onward bow, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and I shall stand by faith on heaven's table land. I am led and I am found. Lord, plant my feet. On higher ground, my heart has no desire to stay. Where doubts arise and fears dismay, no stop may dwell where these abound. My bird, my head is higher ground. Lord, lift me up. That I am found, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to live above the world. Those saints and stars at me are heard. For faith has caught the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. Sabbath school. How are you all doing this morning? That's good to hear. Now today, if those who know the shirts haven't realized, today is has an emphasis on the media department of the Gendevan Church. And 
we are here to show you who we are. A lot of the people today who will be participating, participating today are people who are normally behind the cameras and the tech and all of that. So look out for them. The theme for today is, theme for Sabbath school today is evangelism in a technological time. That's evangelism in a technological time. Now, it's modern times and technology is everywhere. Technology, I'm looking at technology right now. I'm using a tablet, which is a technological device. You know, it's everywhere and we can't escape it. It's become part of our norm. There are people who cannot literally, I, I'm, and I'm one of them, literally cannot go a second without having their phone in their hands, right? And even at church where we are, not at church, even, yes, even at church, we have our phones that have the Bibles and the hymnals on them and we use them as such. You know, I cannot tell you the last time I have written on a piece of paper because everything I just shut down on my phone. That is how much technology has been a part of, has become a part of our everyday lives. And it also, and with that in mind, it is very important that evangelism also takes in technology. We cannot exclude technology from evangelism because that is where everyone is nowadays. That is where everyone resides. Everyone is on social media, on their phones. They're either talking on the phone or they're texting. That is where, where news is. Most people don't get news from the te television broadcast anymore. They get it from social media, from Instagram, from TikTok, those kind of places. And that is where we have to bring our evangelism for them to reach them. Because from what I've heard, face-to-face -face evangelism is getting harder because people react more to what is on their phones than what is right in front of them. And it's, it's in some cases a sad reality because you really, some people are really cut off than, from the real world. So today we will be focusing on ways that even simple people who probably are not that tech savvy can, can evangelize, you know? They can shine their light through to, through to the world around us. Before that, i like for those in church and those who are watching to pay close attention to the screen as we'll now have the opening hymn and the scripture reading. And then that will be followed by the opening prayer by Amal Crossley. Wonderful words of life 
words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. We'll now have the scripture reading, which is Matthew 24, verses 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Let us pray. Please stand. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this privilege to come and to worship you today. We thank you for technology, which helps us to reach people in places where we would not ordinarily have the opportunity to reach. Help us to use our devices and all the tech that we have access to, to reach people. Be with us, Lord, in a special way, even throughout the rest of this Sabbath. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I hope you enjoy those. The hymn was Wonderful Words of Life, which is number 286 in the hymnal. And that was done by students from the Fountain View Academy. That is one of our Adventist um, schools in Canada. You can, you, uh, it's on YouTube. You can, if you want to listen again or you want to find, they have a lot more songs that are equally as beautiful. So, evangelism needs to be friends with technology. Why, you may ask. Social media has taken over a lot of people's lives, especially people my age. A lot of, a, they spend, a lot of people spend a lot of time on social media. Um, I don't have the exact stats in front of me, but I, I had seen something that said that people, Gen Z's that are my, that, that are, those are people my age, spend about 80, 6% of their time on social media. It's a, it's a lot of time. And I can attest to that. Uh, my phone is always in my hand. right? Even when I don't have internet, I just take out my phone just to look at it. That's how a lot of people operate with technology, especially young people. And it has proven to be quite hard 
to evangelize to young people even from the perspective of say a young person trying to spread the gospel and that is not even considering and that is billions of people when we when we equate gen z right and that's not really showing the whole magnitude because you still have people who are older who also spend a lot of time on social media in order so because they a lot of people spend a lot of time on social media therefore social media has the biggest or the greatest opportunities to spread the gospel it has the widest reach you can reach a person in afghanistan in mexico in in canada places that you you would never you would never have the opportunity to go but if you are here on a broadcast somebody who you might never meet until they get to heaven sees you and you are able to minister to them so here are some little things that you can use that you can do to help spread the, the gospel you can post small quotes online i know a lot of people do that already but you can do that you can host an online service you know youtube is the the biggest um diy diy tutorial so you can go on youtube and youtube t tells you that you can do this to let it film you and you you post it and how to post it online if you don't know you can let your profile something as simple as letting your profiles your profiles represent you so you are here in front of me and i can see you but on social media what i see is your social media profile so you can make your social media profile reflect god as if you are a person standing in front of them reflecting god <laughs> Those are just some of the things that I have come up to, I have come up with, but I'm sure with God's help, you can come up with many more. And in that sense, technology isn't just used to reach people who are far away from you. You can use technology to use those around you. You can send a quick text to a friend, encouraging text. You can use online resources when it, when you, when you want to share something with, with a person, like say you go out to study with, with someone, you can use online resources. It's a lot easier and they oftentimes it won't clutter their houses with a lot of papers and it can be compiled into one. There are many other ways that we can use technology to evangelize in others. And we just need to find them and use them. We will now have the we will now have the mission story by Sister Nadine Gaynor. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Good. Now, in addition to our technology, we hear about the stories of how persons' lives are being changed all around the world. Today is no different. I bring you the story all the way from Bolivia. It's about a young lady by the name of Gabriela and how she found her way back to Jesus. It's titled, Song in My Heart. Some famous singers became passionate about music in their childhood. But this was not the case with Gabriela. She grew up in La Paz, Bolivia, with a passion for Jesus. She grew up knowing that Ten Commandments, including the Fourth Commandment about the Sabbath day, reflecting his character of love. She understood the significance of tithe and offerings. When she was nine years old, she gave her heart to Jesus in baptism. But as the years passed, she began to know about the delights of the world, and the door of those delights was music. Gabriella liked to sing for fun on school vacations, 
Then she was invited to join a musical group, and she gladly agreed. Thinking that she could start a musical career and become famous, by the age of 19, she was sure that she was, she was going to sing for her life, for the rest of her life. While studying at a university, Gabriella sang with several music groups. Sometimes she wondered whether she might be making a mistake, such as the time when she was involved in a terrible traffic accident and she was the only person that was injured. She finished her undergraduate studies with a degree in psychology. Then she and several friends created a new musical group and met with instant success. The group performed at numerous events and Gabriella enjoyed going to parties and spending money on luxurious items. She liked singing and spending money. But when she wasn't singing or spending money, she felt empty inside. Life didn't seem to have any meaning. Gabriella didn't stop going to the Adventist church completely. She was a Christian on Sabbath, on Sabbath mornings, but she returned to her life after the worship services. One Sabbath morning, she listened to the special music in the church and a desire formed in her heart to sing for God. I would like to sing in church, she thought. My mother would be so proud of her daughter singing in church. Soon, Gabriella was attending church regularly, not only for the morning worship service, but also for the afternoon program. She started listening to Adventist singers. She realized that she wanted to leave the music of the world, but she struggled with a desire to become famous. Then the COVID-19 pandemic shut everything down. Gabriella could no longer perform on the stage. Rather than despair, she felt an enormous sense of relief. Now it would be easier to cut all ties with the empty, meaningless part of her life. She became close friends with the church pastor and he invited her to Bible studies. She accepted happily. When she finished, she decided to rebaptize, rededicate her heart to God. She felt that God was giving her a new opportunity to live for him. Gabriella entered the waters of baptism less than a year into the pandemic. In a prayer at her baptism, she declared that everything she had belonged to God. I give my life, gifts, and talents to your service, she prayed. After her baptism, she traded the stage of Zoom where she sang for the glory and honor of God. At the request of church leaders, she also began conducting online psychology seminars and Bible studies. Through her influence, four people have been baptized during the pandemic. Gabriella has a special message for young people who might, like her, be tempted to stray from the path that leads to Christ. And her message reads, do not waste your time in the world, she says. Every person has gifts and talents, and you only need to find them and use them for God's glory. As we can see in this story, Gabriella changed her life, and she used the platform of media as what we do on a weekly basis to gain the souls of four persons for the kingdom. So you too can do the same as we continue on the mission of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Sister Gaina. Now we will ha now be going into the lesson study. Be but before we go into the lesson study, teachers, you have uh, five minutes to mark your blanks and greet. 
it greet everyone. Please, teachers, please stand as I pray. Most heavenly and righteous Father, I thank you for your many blessings toward us. I thank you for waking us up this morning so that we can be here and those who are online can be viewing us right now. The Lord, I ask that you may forgive us for our sins and that as we go into lesson study, that we may learn something new and we may be close, we may understand you yeah, a little bit more, even a little bit more. Continue to bless and guide your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now the lesson study will be done by Brother Kevin Coy. And and teacher teachers, please do your thing. The, those who are online, please listen to the songs that will fill the time.
the lesson together and I crave your participation and as you participate we have a mic in the center that you would walk towards you just walk towards the mic and make your comment as we go through the lesson now the topic of our lesson for this week is the bird cage and I'm still getting a little competition. Yes. So the topic of our lesson is the bird cage. And I would assume a number of thought come to your mind. I don't know how many of you have pet birds or just imagine some person don't think it's right to have bird cage up. And a number of thoughts might be coming to your head. But the lesson have a pretty nice twist to this bird cage scenario. Now, let's look at our memory verse. Our memory verse says, In this you, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while. If needs be, you have been grieved by various trials. Now, when I look at the memory verse, one of the first things jump out at me with this text is why, why they have in it, if needs be. Why if needs be? You know, um, you, you, you have greatly rejoiced, but if it needs be. Now, as Christian, there is always going to be needs for need for trial and the earlier we realize this the what's the word i should use the more we will rejoice in these trials and the story of the bird cage brings that out in that there was a bird that the the master wanted to train, wanted to teach some songs. And the bird would not learn the songs because the bird could hear the other birds on the outside. It could, and it become a distraction. So the master cover the cage of the bird and bring the bird in an era that the bird would only hear the song. And the song that was being played, the bird started to learn, started to get it, put it together. And then eventually it become melodious. Now, what is this saying to us? There are times when trials are going to come our way. And the way in which we, are going, we, are, we tend to react is never the right way towards the trial. We mumble, we murmur, we... we, we, we we get so discouraged at times by the trial. But until we go away to a secluded area with the master, where we can feed upon him and fully understand the message, then we will have a song. If I should ask the question now, how many of us have gone through some testing time, some trying time, Sometimes we never see a way out. And a song was there to bring you through. I would like to hear now one or two of the songs that, would, that, that um, brought you through. The hands are going up. Let me hear the songs. Do you want, yes, go ahead, sis. The mic is behind you. Yes. Sometimes it takes some Sometimes it takes a mountain. Eh, Sister Suzette, did you walk with your mic? Sister Suzette, did you walk with your mic? Yeah, raise the first part of sometimes it takes a mountain before I text Sister Daly. Hold on, Sister Daly. The God of the mountain. Hold on, Sister Daly. I want to, we, we're taking them piece by piece. Sometimes we take a mountain. Raise that part of that one for me. Mountain. Sometimes 
comes a troubled sea. And we all can relate to that song, right? Sister so Diley, give me your song as well. So to get a hold on Still the God in the valley. God of the mountain is still God in the valley. For the God of the mountain is still God in the valley. Amen. When things go wrong, he'll make them right. And the bad times the God of the day he's still God in the night no, 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 friends members, I want you to know that God wants us to give praise despite the situation despite whatever situation you are going through there is light at the end of the tunnel and the bird cage message for us is that find it start it start off with a song there is a song to smooth your situation as you go through this part of the lesson now sunday also sunday talks about to the promised land via dead end and it's, it's, it's continue along the whole scenario of the children of God walking upon problem. Problem coming our way. And it is not, and when we go into this lesson, we are not going into it to say that new convert, because you got baptized, you're going to just get problems. But what we are saying, problems are going to come. And we, at the end of this lesson, we need to bring out the point why the problem come and what, where the problem is going to and how the problem is going to make our life much better. Now, Exodus 14, verse 10, and it says, And when Pharaoh draw near, the children of Israel lift their eyes, and behold, the Egyptian march after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of, of Israel cry unto the Lord. They were faced with mountain on one side, mountain on the other side, sea in the front and the army at the back. And what did they do? Cry to the Lord. When you are faced with problem here, sir. Problem here, sir. Problem in front of you. Because you ever realize, I know Jamaican, um, we tend to say some things like trouble coming at tree. And those sort of stuff. But really and truly, when trouble really came, like a, it just come. One behind the other, behind the other. When it rains, it pours. So it just come. But when it comes, what, what, what should we do? We should pray to God. We cry aloud. We should sing. Our neighbors should not hear the murmuring when they, when they ask what's the problem. I have a big example here. Ask by the car anytime I hear it. Not a complaint. I went and you sure say something to him before in the walk. You know, you know, complain. And that there are other persons who are here who can call a name who have gone through so much situations. And, and um, I don't know if anybody brave enough to want to give a little testimony of some situation that you have gone through. And you have realized that by just singing and praying and depending on God, not complaining, and it seems as if it's not as bad as how it, it looked earlier. Anybody brave enough to, to, to share that testimony? Nobody? All right. So we move on. As, 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 as that. All right. Go, go, come, Brother Thomas. Come as, as Brother Thomas. Come to share with us. Because this lesson is not looking at the problem only. It's looking at solutions. Yes, Brother Thomas. Go ahead. Yes, Brother Why? Some the Lord lead us to a dead end for us to understand that it's he who is bringing us through our trials. Yes. He who is helping us to be triumphant in our crucibles. The children of Israel reach their dead end when they reach the Red Sea to prove to the Pharaoh that the Lord was with them and he will make a way out for them. At times we think self is we who are 
accomplishing our tasks. We who can overcome trials by ourselves. But the Lord wants us to know when, you, when we reach our dead end, that it is him who is bringing us through. Amen. Yes, sir. Happy Sabbath. So the, so the question is, what are trials for? Mm -hmm. We go through trials at times, and at times we don't go through trials. Trust me. We start, one of the first things we start is finger pointing. And we blame everybody around us. Yes. But somehow we do not find it possible to recognize two things. That maybe the Lord is just allowing us to go through this period, or we are at fault. But when you go to um, Exodus 14 onwards, it tells you of the Lord's patience with Israel. It tells you of Israel's uh, rebellion, complaint against the leadership, complaint against God himself, not realizing that, look, when you go, when you go and finally reach the promised land, you are going to have, you're going to become a more peculiar people. You are being trained to carry out a duty. You are being trained not just to free, to liberate yourself, but to evangelize the entire world. Yes. Why are we being trained? When we go out there to witness to people, Brother Carl, Brother Carl, you know that people are going to put, put up opposition to you and to what you bring. If you are not, let's say, go through the fire and know how to counter, the gospel that you go out there with you will be defeated because you are not trained. Listen, what the church is going through now it's petty to what is to come. We are going to have to go through trials, both to deal with people on earth and to go to heaven. Nobody will be going to heaven untried. So when we are going through little petty things down here and we are blaming, you know just what Israel did first? When they saw the Egyptian coming, they called upon Moses. What are you going to do? We are going to die. The Egyptians are going to kill us. Moji said, stand and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. Yes. So we must learn to go through our crucibles and ask God to carry us through instead of not taking responsibility for our own actions or and to lack faith in our God. Yes. Brother Mark. I just want the church to understand that all of us who are destined for the kingdom, mm -hmm. we have to go through this crucible. Now, all of us have something in us that we cherish. And sometimes mankind, we reach a place that we believe it is me. It is us who yes. do it. Yes. So God had to put us in a situation where we cannot find any way out. Just like the children of Israel, they were going. But here is the mountain and the, the sea. And when they look, fear and his army was after them. And they realized that as man, we cannot do nothing at this point more than cry out to God. And we must understand that in this birdcage, we are locked in and we cannot get out unless we cry out to God. And this is something that we need to understand that it is God and it is not us. So we must depend upon him and he will carry us through. Yes, and those are the points that, the, that this test was bringing out. And there's one point in it that I haven't seen come out as yet. And this one you can find in Exodus 14 verse 4. And it says, And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all the hosts that the Egyptian may know that I am God. Sometimes the trials that come upon us is to help to encourage somebody else. When their problem come upon them, it's to help to make God, to honor God, to give our God all the glory. When you see, when, when, when the Egyptian who did not follow realize what God had done, they realize that there was a true God. And they know that God is to be served. And when the problem come upon us and we dealt with it, and we go through and people said, no, sir, in strong here. And you know, sir, I know you're stronger, Jesus. 
they also will start, when the dear problem come up, start to be encouraged to praise God just the same. And, 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 and God will be honored. God will be glorified in our trials. All right, so... Um, Brother, Brother Kevin. Yes. I'm um, just following up on what you have said. Yes. The best way to sell a product is by giving your personal experience of yes. using that product. And the same thing happens here. When you have gone through that test and when you have gone through those trials and you have overcome, then when you are there witnessing to others, you can tell of your experience and what God has done for you. So when we are going through our trials, sometimes we cannot see why we would be going through this. Why would God bring this, you know, allow me, bring me in this path. But it is to purify us, is to try us so that we can come out as pure gold. And when we have done so, others can look on and say, yes, this one has gone through it. I can do it as well. And, and that is exactly the root, um, the message that Monday brings out. Asks why, after God, <clears throat> let me see if I can put it properly here. Now, the children of Israel just get delivered and they were being led by pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And the pillar of cloud represents who? God, shout it out, man. They represent God. God leading them. But here we come down now into the lesson where it shows that the pillar of cloud lead them to water. After they were thirsty for three days, it lead them to water. And when they happy for the water and taste the water, the water was bitter. How can a God lead his people to a bitter water? And they were thirsty. Now, sister, since, 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 since you, you, you pointed out that when these trials come, it is to help to make one better. But our city, our, or the way in which we dealt with it can either make it be good or bad. And the first thing that they started to do was complain. Complain, complain. And not only that, is that they forget about the goodness that God had done before. Now, we talk about Israel. Let's talk about us. Let's take an a, a internal look. Are we people who tend to mumble easily? Now come back at church because of uh, uh, the hypocrite. Now come back because somebody done or said something to you. Or, you know, you, the problem where I go to, nobody no can look for me. No leaders no can look for me. So I now go back and, 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 and the, the, try, the, the problem... The, the trial that we are going through is to make us better as was pointed out. So if we don't know how to react to the trial, then we are going to get a bad result. And I want, I see the hands going up. When you also answer, I want, you can go ahead, sister, and then brother and brother. When you go to the, when you are answering, I also want you to bring out the point that how to, be do, to, to, to deal with this situation of trial when they come upon you, when the water bitter and you're thirsty, how you deal with the situation? You make your point. We have all had our bitter water experience. But sometimes I've heard persons going through the, those periods and say, where is God in all of this? Oh, you're going to say, God love me and God they make this happen to me. No, you have one cheap breadwinner in the family and they might drive go down the road and crash and dead and you tell me say God love me how you can console somebody like that to say that God love you you know he's doing this to tr to see how strong you are but you have to rise above this when I listen to the lady that her daughter and her four grandchildren were, were killed it's her bitter water experience it's the only child how do you console somebody like that but in all of this you must pray and give thanks to god and that is where this song um this song where the the the, 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 the history is given that the man is it well with my soul that was his bitter water experience yes 
All right. Um, Brother Bernard, then come up, come up, Brother Green. There's no mic down here. Um, the greatest, some of the greatest leaders that we have in this world are people who can identify with the organization that they lead, meaning that they understood what it meant to deal with people. And I am going to go back to, I am going to piggyback on Sister Dolly's statement with Peter, with Peter there. Peter was a hasty man. At times he was unforgiving. But after he denied Christ, and Christ called him back and said, go feed my sheep, go feed my lamb. Peter knew what it was to forgive people, and he became a very great leader in the church. Peter now learned patience. Peter now learned how to love some more. Peter now learned how to forgive. If you look at the bitter water experience there, every move Israel make, as a matter of fact, they were ignorant people because, because of slavery. They had lacked true knowledge for years. And so they were very ignorant people. And so everything that happened which was challenging, they complained. And the Lord know I want to take them through these various kind of crucibles to teach them how to be patient, how to be loving, how to respect leadership. As, other things. as a dear Ella, I just want to ask you this question. Time is going. One jump. It's almost in Tuesday, and I take Brother Green after. So you are in agreement that God brings us to these trials. Yes. Because there's something in our characters that we must get rid of yes. in order to experience any form of translation. We cannot go to heaven as we are. We must change. And so Israel was coming out of a period where they were ignorant. Even the leader himself did not never have much patience. He ended up killing a man because the man asked him a simple question. So he too had was to go through too. For 40 years, the Lord trained him. Before he could put him put people in his hands to lead. Thank you very much. You understand me? Yeah. So we these things is to, is for our own learning. But guess what? No, for we still don't want to learn. We want to leave the church instead. Yes. Well agreeing. Um, the question is asked. Has God lead us into temptation? No. That, that's the question you are asking. Okay. What, what well, I, we we oh, no, we, one, no. Remember, no. we have viewers listening as no, well. We you are no. asking that are you? You said it was asked. I just want to understand. We say no. We change the wording. We call it we call it crucible. We call it trial. We call it testing. But Jesus teach us to pray to the Father by saying, "Lead us not into temptation." Now, after Jesus left Jordan. His baptism site. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Tempt, yes. For temptation, for yes. tempting. Yes. Now the, the, the beauty about it is that after we've been tempted, we don't eat to the temptation. That is the beauty about it. But in order for us to be real Christian, we have to be tempted and tried. Yes. And um when, when you look at it, if you are a soldier, you're going to be a soldier. You don't have to train. Yeah. Um, Where Bernard, bring Where Bernard speak about the yes. training yes. session. That is true. You had to be, uh, uh, you had to be trained to be a soldier. So if we are going to be a soldier for Christ, we have to go through trial, yes. crosses, yes. temptation. Yes. And may the Lord bless us. look at the lesson this week, we see a pattern of the Israelites going through different crucibles and trials. And we, you may ask the question, why? Remember that for 400 years, they were enslaved by the, the Egyptians. They were paganized during these 400 years. So God had to reintroduce himself, himself to them by removing them from that environment and he had to teach them patience. So that's why they have to go through all these trials because God is now trying to instill in them. Amen. All right, so um, 
you all are on the, 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 the point that we, are, we will all be tempted and tried. And the better way of dealing with it is that we do not complain. That we find encouraging words to sing about, pray about, and, 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 and all of this is a part of the play of um, is a part of what we, we as, as Christian, known as the, the great controversy we are going through. Because there is good and evil out there. And God will be using our bad situation to make us better. If you want to make a point, you have to come to the mic. To make us better. And, and after his point, I'll be wrapping up. Time is up. But I want to share this with you. Often when placed in... A trying situation we doubt the Spirit of God has been leading us but if we but it was the Spirit that brought Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted of Satan when God brought us into trial he is a, he has a purpose to accomplish for our good and I say amen because when I go through it and I pray and he, he, he deliver it is for the bigger picture that I cannot see. And I am, I am comforted knowing that what I am going through now is going to make me better. And because of that, I will sing and praise through the situation. Make a point as I finish reading this. Yes, we, we tend to complain when we go through trials. But we must understand, as my brother here was mentioned earlier, that we have to be tried and strained and tested for us to depend on the Lord. Because sometimes we don't pray and we think that um, God is not watching us. So trials also help us to pray and to depend on the Lord. Amen. Now, it continues to say, sometimes when in the crucible we get burned rather than purify, it is therefore very comforting to know that when we crumble under the temptation we can hope we can hope again because jesus stood firm the god knew is that the good news is that god is 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 that because jesus is our sin bearer because he paid the penalty for our Few failure to endure that the temptation. So the point that he's making is that we might get we will fall here and there when the temptation come upon us. But don't be discouraged. Don't feel bad. Don't walk around with regret. Repent. Walk towards Jesus. Head up. Be confident that he had paid the price for you and he will wash your sins away. Even when others, don't remember, others won't forget it. Jesus washed it to the bottomless part of the, the sea and we can walk with the assurance that we will be saved if we hang on to him. May God bless you. Good morning again, everyone. That was such a well done lesson. Thank you, Brother Corey, for dealing with the lesson in such a pra practical and down to earth way. As I close Sabbath school today, there is one thing that I want to leave with you all. Yes, to, this morning we have been talking about technology and evangelism and how we can use technology to evangelize and to spread the gospel more effectively. But in all that you are doing with technology, there's one thing that I want to let you all know about this generation. For you to reach this generation with whatever method that you have, you have to be authentic. You have to be authentic. 
a lot I've I, been on social media I've heard a lot of people say a lot of people my age say especially those who are who grew up Christian that they saw their parents doing this and then go to church and they sing hallelujah and it has put them to and doing through all of the things that we have experienced a lot of people do not trust word of mouth anymore they don't trust you coming to them and saying god is good they don't trust that anymore they want to see where god has blessed you for your faithfulness they don't just want you to come and say this is this is what they want to see you being a faithful steward and seeing where that is being that is making their lives better and for us to really evangelize i pray i ask that you all in whatever you're doing be authentic christians pray um seek god for help you know be kind be be have a smile well well not everybody is going to want to smile all the time but have a cherry disposition be what god wants us to be and even if you you don't you never use technology in your evangelism i'm sure that you have a have an effect on somebody today there are many ways have i said it before there are many ways for us to share god using technology and technology there are many ways for us to evangelize and it's important that we evangelize and technology has given us a lot more easier ways to do so so please be encouraged that going forward see if you can use technology to further your the cause of god i thank you all for participating and being here with me this morning we will now have the song to close by Sister Alex Walker.
by its way, giving himself away, building what eyes can never see. Planting a seed in you and me Crying for those who cry Dying for those who die Bursting for God Beautiful, beautiful. Happy Sabbath, everyone. You know why I'm here? It's counting down time. You know what I'm counting down? Harvest. Can you believe it? Only three more weeks. Yes, man. I want to get to the clothes already. Green shoes and yellow shoes and black tie and everything. Brethren, time is coming. You know, I know some of us. All right, let me not say some. Let me say some of you, you have gotten the COVID. Maybe some of your family members got COVID and you were the one working with them. And you were so broken, right? And no, you're never broken. No, man, you bend. So you bend like this. And you bend like this under the strain. And some of you, you have lost your job. And you bend again. Well, guess what? Praise the Lord. We were not broken. We were bent, but we were not broken. And this theme that we will be using for our harvest. And when is our harvest again? Independence Day. You don't know when is that? August 6th. So get ready in your black, green, and yellow to celebrate. Give God thanks because we were bent but we were not broken. This morning, we are here 
giving thanks from now because we will continue that praise on August 6th. I'm going to give you a rundown of the scores so far for the classes. There are only 10 classes who are actually doing the lessons. So let me encourage each and every one of us, including myself, to really work on those lessons. I'm going to give you the monetary scores. Some classes are doing well, some have not yet gotten off the mark. So, I'm coming up with it. All right, it's real fine, so let me just... You know, I had it okay before, and now I get here. All right. Technology as its place. Good and bad. Okay, here we are. For unit number one, so far they had contributed $32,000. Let me hear it for unit number one. Amen. For unit number two, 8500 Amen. Unit number three, 20,200. Okay. What about unit number four? Okay, technology again. I like to have my paper, you know. If my paper was in my hand, I wouldn't have to be doing this. Okay. That's why we need to have our Bibles too. Yes, we need our Bibles, the hard copy. All right, here we are at unit number four, 10,500, and we say amen. Unit number five, 178,450 dollars. Amen, amen. And we move on to unit number six, 10,500 dollars. Unit number, let the hear me, amen, encourage them, brethren. Unit number seven, 5,500, and I say amen. Yes, unit number eight, your brother Mark, because of his class at the 178,000, you know. <laughs> All right, we're at number eight, 48,805 dollars, and we say amen. Unit number nine. $34,200. Unit number 10. Amen. Unit number 10. $30,678.50. Amen. Unit 11. 11900 We say amen. Unit number 12. 1000 Encourage them man with the amen. Amen. You can do it. You can do it. Unit number 12. So just start moving again. All right. Unit number 14. $1,500. Amen. Unit 15. $6,000. Unit 16. $21,750. Unit. Amen. Unit number 17. $12,000. Unit number 18, $55,650. Amen. Unit number 19, $22,000. Unit 20, 13000 Unit 22, the amen not a little bit. Brethren, you know, boost them up, man. We need to boost up our brethren, man. Unit number 22. $18,015. And for the children division, $15,560. And for the youth department, $5,200. So, so far, we have collected $562,328 and Fifty cents, and we say to God be the glory. And for those units who have not yet started, I am imploring you and encouraging you that it's not too late. Maybe 
will bend, but you have life and you have survived COVID and you're here. So we want you to join us as we give God the praise. Where is the praise team? Because we need to sing the song, right? The Lord will make a way somehow. Denise, where are the other members? of the praise team okay sister Suzette is coming so for those who have not yet started the Lord will make a way somehow for you so you can get journey, so you can continue and let me just tell you for those who have been doing the lesson the same unit who have um have a whopping 178,000 their score so far is 211 points so they are doing well in all areas so let me encourage you all the lord will make a way somehow so you need to start doing what you have to do have yourself a blessed and peaceful sabbath day drive is to most of the funds will go towards the uh, tiling of our sanctuary here now we had a, we have a tile drive but half in the forefront now but we continue to mention particularly for what I'm seeing this morning uh, for those of you who know the church will be tiled uh, this mic is not giving me any justice. Uh, we have already bought the tiles. And so we just ask of you, if you are not... Uh, you want to change mics? Thank you, brother man. Those of you who are not aware, we still are interested to collect the funds for those of you who still want to contribute. Otherwise, now, I mention this because I am seeing something here. I only have two minutes. I'm seeing something here. For instance, I was sitting this morning and when I look, I see a brother Martin who I've not, I've not seen for many moons walk in. And when I look again, I saw Glenn and Carol Dunkley walk in who I've never seen for a long time. And then when I look, I see um, Topaz car drive gone up there. Brethren, we all welcome you. And what I realize is that uh, it's only your membership that is moved from Glenn but you ain't going nowhere because Glenavon is always in the place. Amen, brethren? Amen, brethren? Yes, it's only their membership that, that has moved, but they still come to Glenavon, and this means something to somebody. And so we're asking those of you who do not know, we will take your contribution just the same to continue to beautify this church. Many of you who have gone on to other places and to other fields and to other churches have contributed to where this church is today and so we will not forget you but the work continues brethren and so we ask you to continue to contribute in whatever shape or form 
so that we continue to beautify our church. Welcome one, welcome all, and welcome all of you. And God bless you. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Come on, man. Good morning. Happy Sabbath to you. And we are on many journeys. On our harvest journey come the 1st of August. And guess what? We will be on a journey of faith. Who remember journeys that used to be on the radio? Anybody as old as me in here? We are going on a journey of faith with the youth. And this program is an initiative of services department and we are taking our youths through the story of the talents now that's the title of the initiative i'm not going to give you all the details now but it will be very exciting we will be dividing in groups we'll outline all of that for you but i want to just share with you in the story found in matthew 25 Yes, Matthew chapter 25. It speaks to the five talents, the, the, the talents that were awarded to the master's servants. And what they, who remember what the one with the one talent did? He hid it. But guess what? Come next week, we will tell you what we're going to do with the one talent. No, the youth will need your support. And everybody will be embarking on this journey with us. Not only the church, but the entire community, all your family members. So come next week and we will tell you more about it. One last thing I want to say is that the youths will be in six teams. Six teams. And uh, next week, we'll detail the members as well as the areas that will be for our focus. So, listen up for us next week. The Lord bless you and have a wonderful Sabbath day. These are the announcements for Sabbath, July 16, 2022. Harvest Thanksgiving service will be August 6th. Jamaican colors are to be worn. We are celebrating under the theme, bent but not broken, we give thanks. All Sabbath schools uh, uh, classes are reminded that their goal is $50,000. It's summertime again and summer camp is in full swing. West Canuka 2022 will be at Camp Braham, uh, Treasure Beach in St. Elizabeth. Camp is a week-long event or a week-long activity, and it starts this Tuesday, July 19th, and it goes up to the 26th of July, 2022. The cost per person is 4,500, and transportation cost is 2,500. Camp forms are still available. Please contact Sister Dunn, that's me, for more information. The Seventh-day Adventist Church Salt Spring will be having their annual Harvest Thanksgiving service this coming Sabbath, that's July 23, under the theme, Giving My Best to You, Lord. The programs or the day's program will begin at 9 a.m. The Community Service Federation of St. James, so the St. James Community Service Federation, presents Luncheon 2022 at the West Jamaica Conference on Thursday, August 4, 2022. Please see a member of the community or any member of the Community Service Department for more information. This is the second reading of request of transfer of membership for Brother Robert Lewis from the Seventh-day Adventist Church Glendevon to the Seventh-day Adventist Church Portland Cottage in Vere Clarendon. Yes. Brother Lewis has been a member of this church for a short time. But he's a dedicated member. He's, a, he's way from Clarendon. And he used to drive from Clarendon to come here to come to church. He has chosen to go to a church closer to where he resides. And we support him. So those of can someone use, move a motion for 
Brother Lewis's membership to be transferred to this church closest to his home? Do I have a second? Okay. So those who, who agree that his member should be sent, let me sit by the raising of your hand. Those who disagree, please indicate by the same sign. Motion is carried. The health ministry's department is hosting its back to school fair Sunday, July 24th. So that's next Sunday, right here at the church grounds. Your support is requested. Youth month is August 2022. The youth will be in charge of services for the entire month, and we crave your prayers. On the same note, Sister Alex Walker is asking to meet all youth right after divine service. Ophel Pathfinder and Adventure Club will be held this afternoon upstairs at 4 p.m. The SDA Church Cornwall Courts will be in will have will be having their annual harvest celebration Saturday, well Sabbath, July 30, 2022 on the new church ground, which is beside the Green Pond Infant School. They celebrate under the theme, Renewed Faith, New Beginning, It's Harvest Time. A health tip from the Health Ministries Department, watermelon can help revive stress. Let me say that again. Watermelon can help relieve stress and anxiety. All as well as to energize your, keep you energized and boost your, boost your metal, metabolism, 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 right? <laughs> Stay hydrated, drink plenty of water and natural juices to keep your bodies at optimum health during the summertime. Birthday greetings are going out to Sister Dahlia White, also known as Crystal. She celebrated her birthday on Thursday. Birthday greetings are coming from your friends and family. Brother Andre Marsh is celebrating his birthday today, and we pray that he has a double portion of blessings as he worship with us. The family life and the clerical department would like to extend a happy belated Oh, as well as the youth department, a happy belated birthday to our wonderful and talented Auntie Natalie. So whenever you see her, you can, uh, she celebrated her birthday uh, last week, no, Thursday of this week. Also, we want to say happy birthday to our prepare to meet that God evangelist, Elder Michael Henry. The clerical department and the family life department would like to say happy birthday and happy anniversary greetings to all individuals and couples who celebrated their birthdays or anniversaries last week or will be celebrating in the coming week. Prior requests are in order for Sister Dockery, she was admitted to the hospital and we crave your prayers for her. Also, brother and sister Carlton Brown are requesting your prayers. Please lift them up to our God. Sister Suzette Hutchinson is requesting prayers on behalf of her friend's aunt, a non member by the name of L Louise Quarry. She suffered a stroke and is right now at the Cornwall Regional Hospital. And I leave you with this thought. If it's God's will, then it's God's bill. We are encouraged by Psalm 46, verse 10. He says, be still and know that I am with you. Have a happy Sabbath.
Happy Sabbath, church. Everybody looks so still. Can I invite you to stand? Can, can I invite you to stand? You've been sitting since you got in here this morning. Some of you from 9.15. Some of you before that. Stand up, everybody. Our lesson this week spoke about the birdcage. Yes? But God is trying, testing us so we can know him. We can know who he is and know that we can trust him to take care of us. You recognize that? You can stretch your hands up. That's the practice for the hallelujah. Can you stretch your hands Yes. Stretch your hands up. The practice of the hallelujah. Okay. Amen. You may see it. You may see it. You may see it. And as we continue in our worship this morning, you are God alone. And I know you know it, so we're going to do that together.
worship his holy name. It's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass, whatever may pass, and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord.
salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is also to be feared among all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are idols. For the Lord made the heavens and the earth. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give to the Lord O families of the people, Lord, glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come before him. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Glory be to the Father and to Creator and King. Indeed, we are happy to know that you are a God who loves us with an everlasting love. You have come today, Lord, because you have been a very good God to us throughout the week. You have spared our lives to see a new day, a new Sabbath day in your courts today. Father, we worship you. Help us to give our hearts totally to you, now, dear Father. Help us to give our praises to you, Lord, because you are worthy to be praised. Bless all your people who have come to worship you today. May we do so in spirit and in truth, now we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Number, our opening hymn is, It is almost time for the Lord to come. Number 212. 
is almost time for the Lord to come. I hear the people say, number two, one, two. you 
could come. Welcome to the family. We're gonna have a whole lot of fun. Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath, church. Welcome back to another Sabbath of worshiping God with us. We, the Glendevon Seventh-day Adventist media team, prays that you all will be filled with the Holy Spirit today and be inspired to take great steps in your life that will bring you closer to God. To my non-Seventh-day Adventist visitors, thank you for choosing Glendevon to worship. Some of you may be listening in on 91.7. YouTube or Facebook. You would have heard the word each Sabbath and each night. It would have been clear words from God's manservant. No visitors, no listeners. It is your opportunity to choose this day whom you will serve. There might be some visitors who are listening or visiting for the very first time. Let me hope that as you worship with us today and as the message goes forth today may bring you today may be the beginning of something new in your life. Welcome. Sing along with me church. Welcome to the family. I'm so glad you could come. Welcome to the family. We're gonna have a whole lot of fun. Shake hands with your neighbors and tell them your name. Now hug them real tight and hug them again. Welcome to the family. I'm so glad you could come. Welcome to the family. We're gonna have a whole lot of fun. Brethren, when it rains, it pours. I just told you not too long ago when I was making the arm. Um, promotions that we have some visitors among us from last week and Marie and week before and Marie Harty today I, I, I can't recognize the amount of I will not say former members I'm not gonna take that chance because we can call Carol Dunkley former member not Glenn Dunkley they are still members here and we can call Topaz I cannot call Topaz a former member neither because I know she still loves Glenn Devon but there are so many uh, people who have been members of the church who have decided to come through today but guess what, brethren? To top it all off, we have a former pastor. Well, he was a pastor here, rather. His name is Maurice Anthony Chambers. Welcome, Pastor Chambers, brethren. Pastor Chambers, we welcome you. And I you to say a word to the brethren. Pastor, just before you bring the greetings, there is a car, 419-4941-GW, I think it's parked right there. It's blocking the road. And there's another one down there, brethren. This area, must no cars should be parked along here. Because when people are ready to, um, is ready to exist later on, you're going to have a problem. So please address your car if you know you park along here. Thank you. Is growing tremendously. I have been following you and I've been watching and listening and I'm seeing the good report. But as we journey through this land, as we go through our crucibles, as we go through our bird cage experience, let us keep the song in our hearts. As we sing the song of Moses and the Lamb by and by, let us be faithful because one day we will join with the saints of all ages throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity when we gather on that 
shore, the crystal shore, when we see Jesus and we shall join with the throng, as Revelation 15, I think verse 5 tells us that we will join in the song of Moses and the Lamb. And we will sing to Jesus because he is worthy. I don't know about you, but I look forward to that glorious day because when we start to sing, when I join with you and join with the saints of all ages... And we sing a redemption song. Even the angels will have to fold their wings. Because they cannot tell the joy that our salvation sings. So I'm looking forward to that singing. I'm looking forward to singing that song. But it's good to see you all. I don't want to start calling names. Because I may just get myself into trouble. Right, Sister Sandra? Yes, I may just get myself into trouble. Uh, uh, it's so good to see everybody. Good to, good to see you all. Hey, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So joyful to see you all. Yes, I'm so excited. Sister, I see your, your, your young looking husband sitting over there. Yes, having gone to death's road and back. God be the glory. To God be the glory. It's really, really good to see you. Elder Bernard. Thank you for the good work you are doing here, sir. And continue to blaze a trail. Uh, and of course, I know you have a good team of elders and leaders. And also a wonderful pastor, Pastor Dyer. My very good friend. I know he's a busy man. And sometimes he's uh, other places. And you know that he has received a, a new call. But um, I trust that he will continue to linger here with you. And give you the good leadership that he has been doing. And so... I just also want to let you know that I'm praying for your evangelists. When I heard about um, uh, um, the, 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 the name, when I heard the name Michael, Michael Henry, I thought it was, I thought of the Michael Henry that I, that I knew back, um, from Central. But when I met the young man, I realized that he is a different Henry, but um, he's from the tribe of Henry and nevertheless. And I know that God has been using him, and I trust that God will continue to speak through him and Use you as a witness to bring somebody to Jesus so that when Jesus comes, we all can join with the saints in singing of that song of Moses and the Lamb. God bless you. Good to see everybody. Musicians, thumbs up. God bless. God bless. Choir, the beautiful choir. You know, my wife told me, I, I, I hope nobody is from any other churches here, you know, but my wife told me that she loves this choir. Yes, she, she loved the Glen Devon Choir. Yes, yes. And that's a sentiment that, that I share, okay? So God bless you. Have a wonderful day. The first time the temptation comes, meet it with such a decided manner, it will never be repeated. A thought from the Children's Ministry Department. At this moment, we'll be having the Remnant Choir with the special song, the Remnant Choir. Calling us. 
Happy Sabbath, everyone. It is indeed good to see so many of us out this morning. Now, for our special feature this morning, it will be from our special needs. And we will be focusing on signs that your child or family member has a disability and where you can get support. Now, if you suspect your child has a disability or a special need, you would want to find out as soon as possible, right? Yes, because the earlier you find out or early detection allows you to understand the difficulties that these persons may face in their future, right? So we have a few um, disabilities that I will be looking at that are common among children. And we're looking at ADHD. We know what ADHD is, right? No? All right, so it's Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. All right, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And are we familiar with the signs of this disability? Yes, what are some of the signs? Can't sit still, what else? Easily distracted, what else? All right, so one, as we are, are correctly answered, they have difficulty maintaining attention, whether it, it's in a task or play activity. So anything that they have to do, they find it difficult to sit still, to pay attention, and to even complete a task, right? The next one is autism, and we are very familiar with that one, right? Yes, so we realize that they have repetitive repetitive um, actions, right? And they also have obsession-like preoccupation. So they're obsessed with anything that they're doing or obsessed with a routine, right? So they have obsession with objects or conversational subjects. And the next one is dyslexia. We are familiar with that one, right? Yes, so they have difficulty pronouncing and rhyming words. Some persons may think that they are... Um, they can't do anything, they can't read, they can't write. That's not the case, it's just that they are more slower and their reading is inaccurate, they have inaccurate reading skills and they have problems spelling as well. So we realize that their letters may be um, mixed up, like for example, what? What two letters they oftentimes B and D, right? So those are oftentimes a challenge for them and even persons that don't have dyslexia have trouble with those letters as well so that's just one one of the signs all right and we have many other signs that we can look at but because 
of time, we are not going into all of that. These are just common signs that we know. And if you have any questions, you can see me after. But there are different schools, there are different entities, there are different organizations that you can go to get help. Now we have School of Hope, we have the Autism Center, we have Catherine Hall Special Unit, that's on the school ground, and we have Jamaica Council for Persons with Disabilities. So any information you want, any school, you, there, there is school, there are schools rather, and organization out there that can give you help and support. But if you have any other questions, you can see me after. Thank you. God loves kids. And it's every color Invite and all the kids to come to the front. You don't have to be an angel. All the little to ones, be please come to the front. Special in his eyes. He said he enjoyed 316 and he proved it on Calvary too. God loves kids. Ordinary kids. Kids love. All the kids, all the kids, you too, come. You don't have to be an angel Young to be Good morning, boys and girls. I am Uncle Ricky. So, uh, good morning, Uncle Ricky. We don't feel special at all. Good morning, Uncle Ricky. Okay, good, good. Now, this morning, we're going to tell you a story. It's a very familiar story about David and Goliath. You know, why I choose this story? You know, because you all are little, and I want to know that despite you are little, you can do Great things, right? Okay, so the story was about young shepherd boy David, right? And David, the, the story started when King Saul had a little problem, right? He had a dream. He was worried that somebody's going to take over his kingdom, all right? And while he was there worried and said, I wonder what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, he, he called for Solomon. Solomon telling him that, hey, I have a problem. And he said, what is your problem? He said, man, somebody, I feel like somebody's going to take over my kingdom, you know. Something's going to happen. But the truth is, he knew that God was angry with him because he did something. Anyway, he reached out. Solomon said he knew of somebody that could, you know, calm his nerve. So he said he knew of a shepherd boy that plays the harp really well. And he played the harp and he came and he calmed Solomon. But after that, they had a very uproar. There was this big, big giant that wanted to take over the Israelite kingdom. Right? The giant's name was Goliath. Roar! That was great Goliath. Now why Goliath? Why are you crying? You're going to be here? All right. So, while Goliath was there, chanting, chanting at the Israelites, because they were from the Philistines, and people, the Philistines were like big people. You see them over there, all the way up, that's how big he is? That's how all the Philistines, they were like, they were like giants. So, they come, and he threatened the, 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 the Israelites to say, listen, my man, you don't have anybody over there who can come and defeat me. Nobody can defeat me. And he laughed. And he laughed because you're all so little. You're all so little. There, the king was there fretting about. But David had his brothers also in that battlefield trying to fight that giant. But none of them could defeat the giant. David went to give his brothers some food. And while he went to give his brothers some food, they were saying, 
he realized his brothers was covered. He said, what's happening? Why are you guys hiding? He said, that great giant is going to defeat us. And he said, I can fight that giant. Of course, his brothers laughed. Ha, ha, ha. Come on, man. Go back home to daddy because you're just a little shepherd boy. While on his way, he stopped by to the king and tell the king that, King, I want to fight that giant for you. The king said, son, go home because my best fighters can't defeat that giant. I have the greatest fighters and all of them is coward and can't beat the giant. What makes you think you can beat the giant? And he said, because I've beaten many lions, many wolves before, because God is with me. You know what that means, right? With God, all things are what? Possible. So, David decided, and after the king, despite his greatest fear and everything, he was just there. He's like, you know what? I don't have a choice, you know. I mean, hey. Let's just use this little boy. And he said, son, I'm going to give you my armor. And I'm going to give you a big sword. But he said, no, king, thank you for all of that. But I don't need that. All I need is my little sling in my hand. So while the little David went over to the giant, Come, David, come to the giant, come to the war. The giant look at David and laugh. Little boy, what are you doing here? And David said, I am here to defeat you and put you and your people in slavery. Of course, what do you think the giant do? <laughs> Go back home, little boy, before I squash you. And he said, I am here in the name of Jesus, and I'm going to here to defeat you. So what, what did you say in the first part? I can do all things to who? I can just imagine David saying that to himself, and then David picked up a little stone, and he did what? Swing it. Swing. And he swing his sling. Come, swing it, David. Swing it. And he swing his sling. And the little stone went poof in the giant. And the giant fell down. Now all the people rejoice. Rejoice with me. Hey, thank you. Thank you. And David, the little shepherd boy, they all lift him up and cheer and say, hooray. Now the aim of this story, you know what I want you to get for this story? Not because you're little. Sometimes mommy and daddy ask us to do things. I mean, oh, I'm too little. Or somebody at church asks you to do something. Oh, I'm too little. You're never too little, okay? And you must believe that with God by your side, you can do what? All things. All right. So we're just going to pray. Any brave little boy want to prove that God is here with me now and I want to pray this morning? Who has the strength? Who has the courage? Oh, my. Come I know you had the courage a long time. Now we're just going to pray this morning so that every other little boy and girl can gain the courage and strength. Let us pray now. Attitude of prayer. Close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Pay attention. Yes, Zahari. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Lord, help us to have the courage to do all things because uh, all things through christ we can do all things through christ who strengthens us lord help us through all our trials and temptations give us strength cover us on their blood in Jesus' holy name amen amen all right boys and girls you're gonna go to your seat now and you're gonna be giants for god all right Any shape, any color, any size You don't have to be an angel To be really special in His eyes He said He is John 3.16 And He proved it on Calvary too God loves kids, ordinary kids is no 
and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for a wonderful Sabbath day. Thank you for health and strength. As the usher is about to collect the tithes and offering, I pray, I pray that you accept the tithes and offering as a gift of worship. Name I pray. Amen. Amen. standing. The scripture reading for today is Matthew chapter 24 verses 29 and 30. Again, the scripture reading for this morning is Matthew chapter 24 verses 29 and 30. I'll read in your hearing. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man come in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Here ended the reading of a portion of the Lord's holy word. We honor it by saying, thanks be to God. Jesus, look full in his 
let us pray. Great God of the universe, be thy children who come before this morning. Praise and adore your matchless name. We give you thanks for today. We give you thanks for the communication department of this church, dear Lord. I'm asking you at this time, dear Lord, to touch each and every one of us here, Father. Can't you give us a zeal, the willpower, dear Lord, to continue, dear Lord. Lord, it's not a easy word, dear Lord. But I'm asking you, dear Lord, to give us the strength to cope with the challenges each week. Lord, I place before you the, the waking congregation in your hand at this time, Lord. Lord, we come today with different means, dear Lord. We are sick, we are thirsty, and you know, dear Lord, the different complaints we have to, dear Lord. We come to, dear Lord, to be filled by you, dear Lord. I'm asking you at this time, dear Lord, to send your Holy Spirit among us, dear Lord. Give us listening ears, dear Lord, that when the preacher comes, dear Lord, to proclaim, to proclaim your word, dear Lord, we will get the full meaning of it, dear Lord, and turn our life completely to you. Lord, in my hand, dear, I have that from prayer request, dear Lord. We have Sister Dunkery, dear Lord. I'm asking, dear Lord, to visit her at this time, dear Lord, and touch her wherever he is, dear Lord. Heal her, dear Lord. Sister Louise Quarry, dear Lord, she is sick, dear Lord. You is the one who made, make her, dear Lord. You spake and it was done, dear Lord. You command and it stood fast. So, Lord, you are the great healer, dear Lord. I want you to touch her at this very present moment, dear Lord. Heal her body or her soul, dear Lord. And when that shall come, dear Lord, we give you all the praise and the thanks. Sister Calter, Brother Brown, Sister and Brother Brown, dear Lord, I place them in your hand, dear Lord. You know them, dear, more than I, dear Lord. So I'm asking, dear Lord, to visit them at this special moment. Lord, I present the young people of this church in your hand, dear Lord. Lord, COVID is caused a separation with you and them, dear Lord. They stopped coming to church, dear Lord. They lost their first love for you. At this moment, dear Lord, I wanted to visit them at this moment, dear Lord. Help them, dear Lord, to come back to the first love they have, dear Lord, to praise and adore your name, dear Lord. Wherever they are at this moment, dear Lord, I'm asking them to worry their conscience, dear Lord, and make them remember that today is Sabbath day and they should be in your temple to praise and adore your name. Oh, Lord, I place Elder Henry in your hand at this time, dear Lord. You are using him in the past. You are using him throughout this week, dear Lord. You will use him to do again, dear Lord. So, Father, touch his lips. Let his word flow, dear Lord, from your throne, dear Lord. At the end of the sermon, dear Lord, somebody will cry out, I heal, I heal, and come to glorify thy name. Continue to beat us the empty approach of this day, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for hearing Thank you, Lord, for answering. In Jesus' humble name I pray. Amen. The pleasure is mine today to introduce the speaker. I think this speaker needs no much introduction. He has been here for the last two weeks, and for those who have been here in the physical church, online, on more 91.7, can say he's a powerful man of God. He hails from the Chester Castle district. Today will be no exception as he comes to present the word of God to us. I ask that you may pray a prayer in your heart that as the message goes out on the earwaves of more 91.7 FM and on YouTube, 
on Facebook, in our local church, in our community, and around the world that lives will be saved. Before he comes, we will be listening to the song of meditation by the Remnant Choral. There is one love me so
invite you to stand with us as we sing our theme song. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you've paid. Bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this your never stand wash me in your cleansing flow now all I know your forgiveness and Everybody's singing, everybody's singing today. Everybody's singing. High and lifted up. Sing with us, sing with us. It's Jesus. He's the Son of God. Let's crown him. Because he's still the treasure of heaven. Even though he was crucified. You know he's worthy. Yes, he's worthy. He's worthy. That's our Jesus. That's our Jesus. We sing it again. Worthy is the Lamb. And we lift our hands and praise the Lord. Lift your hands and say amen, somebody. Amen. You may be seated down there. Let me say good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Are you happy to be in church today? Good afternoon, YouTube and Facebook. Are you happy to be joining us? If you're happy over there online, just type in, I am happy to be joining the Glen Devon family today. And for you who are in the building, if you're happy and you know it, say amen. amen. Say praise the Lord. Amen. Say thank you, Jesus. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is a good God. If you look at me today, you know that God has been good. Hmm? You know why God is good to me? Because today is the best day of the week. And it's the best day of the year. Because we're in the best month of the year. <laughs> don't, 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 come on, play hate us. Don't, don't, don't hate us now. The July is our seventh month. And we are on the seventh day. And today is my birthday. So I am super blessed and favored. And flavored. <laughs> Pastor Chambers, is, is July your month? Sorry, sorry, sorry. You're, you're, uh, yes, please do. We, we take people in this month. Yes, you can be engrafted into the month of July. <laughs> amen, amen. I'm happy to be here with you today again. And let me just use this opportunity to welcome Pastor Chambers and his family. You know him very well. I'm happy that he's here to worship with us today and to be a part of our worship. I'm not nervous because he's here. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> but, and also welcome to those who are joining us again on More FM. 91.7. You see, you can't leave out 7. 91.7. Good to have you over there on More FM. Welcome our visitors who are in the building this afternoon to worship us, to worship with us. Those who are online, we welcome you. You might be a backslider out there. This is your opportunity today to come home, to sign up for Jesus. Are you with me down there? If you're here, and you have not yet made that decision, but you are contemplating doing so, then you have this moment. You have the next few minutes to do so. 
to say yes to Jesus. Because in a little while, the water will be troubled. Come on, say amen, somebody. Persons are going to give their lives to Jesus today. You ought to say amen. They're going to leave here being brand new people. New direction. New focus. Are you with me down there? And so we say to God, be the glory. Great things he hath done. Amen. Amen. We'll be here this afternoon as well to continue our meeting. So with that being said, I invite you all to stand again. You know how we do it down here. Because I don't want to keep you until tomorrow morning. I want to ensure I finish before sunset, Pastor. So I invite everyone to stand. And as you stand, I want to say welcome to some of my members from Chester Castle. I'll have to have words with you after I'm through here. Because I hope church is not empty. <laughs> but good to have you, Sir Broomfield. And I saw Sister Reed earlier. Yes, nice to have you, my church family, to be here to support me. Good to have you, good to have you. We hold our Bibles now. We hold our Bibles as we do in the nights. For the past two weeks, hold your Bibles high. Remember I told you there's no such thing as a holy iPhone or a holy Samsung or a holy tablet, but there's a holy Bible. Are you with me down there? So make sure you get back into the habit of walking with this book to church. So you can turn the leaves when you get here. Are you with me down there? Let's go now. This is my Bible. It is the word of God. Satan doesn't want me to read and believe this Bible. But I am going to read and believe this Bible. For it is the word of God. Let's find the word today again in the devil's face. And then we stand and we sing powerfully our song, Spirit of the Living God. We want him to fall afresh on us today as we prepare to hear from heaven. We sing today. The living God. We're asking him today to fall afresh on us. The spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on me. We want him to break us today. Melt me. Mold me. Fill me today. Spirit of the living God. All afresh. And our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Heavenly Father. You who created all things. You spoke and it was done. You commanded and everything stood fast. We come to you today on this your holy Sabbath. Earth's the birthday. We come to you today because we need a word from glory. You have chosen me, the vehicle, to transport 
such a word today. But unless I am aligned and fueled the right way, I can't go. So I pray in the name of Jesus that you will fill me up with the Holy Ghost power. May you give me fresh bread from glory. May the light of heaven shine through me and upon me today. Loose my tongue. Give me inspiration. Give me the right words to speak to your people. And I pray that today a change will come about in somebody's life. Do a work in this building, Heavenly Father. Condescend down here. Reveal your glory to someone today. Reveal yourself to us as you did to Moses on the mountain. May we experience the burning bush experience today. So when we leave this place, our faces will glow from the presence of God. And somebody can look at us and say, truly, they have been with Jesus. Hold the devil in check. And may when we come to the end, may no one else be praised, be honored, be glorified. But Jesus Christ alone, for he is worthy. In his name we pray and God's people we say. Amen. Thank you everybody. You may be seated down there. You may be seated. How far from home I ask as on, I bent my steps, the watchman spake. The long dark night is almost gone. The morning soon will break. Then weep no more, but speed thy flight with hope's bright star, thy guiding ray. Till thou shalt reach the realms of light in everlasting day. Where are we now? That's a sermon today. Where are we now? The songwriter pens these words. It's almost time. For the Lord to come. I hear the people say. The signs of heaven. Are growing dim. It must be. The breaking of the day. With all that we see. Happening around us beloved. I just stand here. This afternoon. To let it be very clear that we are nearing the end of time. Jesus is soon to come. Are you hearing me down there? And so, Jesus, when he was here, the disciples, Pastor Chambers, asked him an important question. As they left the precincts of Jerusalem's temple on that fateful day, they asked Jesus, based on what they saw, they showed him the beautiful temple, Jerusalem. And their minds were caught up on the material structure, this fine edifice with its beautiful drapes, with its golden tiles and chandelier, I believe. And so they said, Jesus, look at this beautiful temple. Isn't it a, a, a magnificent structure? But Jesus wanted them to understand 
that there is something better coming. So he said to them, you see that temple there? It shall not be left there one stone upon another that shall not be hewn down. And you ought to know that prophecy spoken by Jesus about the destruction of Jerusalem, you ought to know that that took place already. You see, uh, the signs of Matthew 24, uh, some of the signs in there have already been fulfilled, while some is still meeting their fulfillment. Stay with the preacher today. And so Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 15 through the 18, uh, Jesus said, uh, therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso read it, let him do what? Let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into where? The mountains. And the next verse said, and Jesus said there, let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go down there to get his clothes. And so Jesus made it clear to the people that they were to look for some indications that will tell them when Jerusalem would be destroyed. And so, ladies and gentlemen, while they were there under the Roman oppression, Cestus, this Roman general, marched against Jerusalem to overthrow Jerusalem. So, Cestus gathered the Roman army together. And when Jerusalem was under siege, the people were in there. They saw the Romans coming and they became afraid. But something happened, ladies and gentlemen. While they were there in anticipation of being defeated, Cestus and the Roman army retreated. That was the signal to God's people that something is about to happen. That was a signal to God's people to get themselves ready to leave the city before destruction came. But what they did... They march after the retreating Roman army. And that made the Roman soldiers and the army extremely mad and did not forget what they did. So in AD 70, stay with the preacher, when Titus marched again and surrounded Jerusalem and they were under siege, the water supply was cut off, no food was being there. Josephus said there were parents in there, there were husbands in there, there were wives in there, there were children down there and because of the food restriction, Josephus, the historian said, they ate their sandals. They ate their little bells. They ate their children. Wives betrayed husband. Husband betrayed wives. And it went on like that. Ladies and gentlemen, you ought to know this afternoon that we are just like those people over there. In a little while, we are going to be on the siege. And so while they were in there, and Titus and his army were on the outside, you see, one of the soldiers became impatient. And so he lit a bow and arrow and he fired it directly into Jerusalem and it caught the drape and Jerusalem was on fire. And ladies and gentlemen, after it was burned to the ground, you ought to know that ladies and gentlemen, the Roman soldiers, they marched in there and to get the gold from the brick that was melted, they dig Jerusalem. Jerusalem down brick by brick fulfilling the words of Jesus but somebody ought to know today that the people that took the words of Jesus seriously and escaped Jerusalem the historians told us that no Christian lost their lives in Jerusalem why because they obeyed the voice of Jesus somebody ought to know 
know today that this world is poised for destruction. But you and I can escape the destruction that is coming if we listen to the words of God. That's what a song said. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his words and the doctrine, what a glory he sheds on our way. When we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. You ought to say amen down there. And then Jesus went on to make some other statements. In Matthew 24, verse 29 and 30, Jesus said to the disciples, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened. Are you still with me? Yeah, the sun shall be darkened. The moon shall not give her light. And the star shall do what? Fall from where? Heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be what? Shall be shaken. Then verse 30 said, Then the sign of the Son of Man will do what now? Appear in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and the great glory. My question this afternoon to you who are here in the building and those who are online. Do you think or believe that the stars fell from heaven already? Do you think that what I just read is still in the future? All right. Well, for the old time Adventists, for the new ones, you will learn today just where we are. You see, let that soak. Think about it. You see, in the book of Revelation, chapter 5 and 6, God is a loving God, Pastor Dyer. You see, when John was on the isle called Patmos, all by himself, in oppression, God revealed to John things that would come in the future. Are you still with me? And so, ladies and gentlemen, in Revelation chapter 5 and 6, the record is there that John saw something in glory. John said he saw in vision, beloved, in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book that was sealed on each side with seven seals. And John said when he looked past the chambers, no one in heaven or earth was worthy to loose the seals of the seven books or, or to loose them and make them plain. So John began to cry. But then somebody spoke to John and showed him one like a lamb that was slain who was worthy to open the book and to loose the seven seals and so Jesus took the book from the hand of God the Father and opened before John the history of the church are you still with me so in chapter 6 of Revelation there are seven seals open in there but this afternoon, I ain't going to spend the time to deal with seal 1 through to 7. All I am going to do is to look at seal number 6. Because seal number 1, we have been through that period already. With the pure church. Am I talking to Adventists? Seal number 2, we have been through it already when the church was persecuted. Seal number three, we found the, the compromising church. Are you still with me? Seal number four, we find dear ladies and gentlemen, the church of God being persecuted again. And in seal number five, the language was symbolic when the blood of the martyrs was seen under the altar crying to God, asking him, how long? Yeah, church is quiet. So we have been through that period already. Uh -huh. Where are we now preaching? 
Revelation 6, verse 12 to 17. Let's go. The sixth seal. You see, the Bible said in verse 12 of Revelation, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a what? A great what somebody? A great earthquake, and the sun became what? Black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as what? Became as blood. And the next verse said somebody, and the stars of where? Heaven fell where? Under the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her on timely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Jesus in Matthew 24 told the disciples that one of the signs or some of the signs that would indicate the nearness of his coming would be a great earthquake, the stars falling from heaven, the sun refusing to shine, and the moon turn into blood now have we had those experiences already well let's see what the historians say we have here to listen we have we have had many earthquakes before am I speaking the truth in terms of the magnitude of how much it measured on the Richter scale but what makes this earthquake that I'm going to tell you about now fits into Bible prophecy is the wide area in which it covered. Come on, Seventh day Adventists. You ought to know that this church is a church that is built on prophecy. Don't you hear Peter said, we have a more sure word of prophecy. Am I talking to you down there? So... The great earthquake that fits this description that Jesus spoke about. You can read it on your screen. It's the Lisbon earthquake that took place November 1st, 1755. Write it down, believers. Write it down, new converts. Write it down, young people. Go home and research again for yourself. This earthquake, according to Robert Sears, it said it extended over an area of at least 4 million square miles. That's how large an area the earthquake covered. And so I wanted to know just how much is, uh, is uh, 4 million square miles. So you ought to know that the great United States of America is 3 Point eight million square miles. Didn't get the preacher. I'm teaching today. 3.8 million square miles is America. So the great area over which the Lisbon earthquake extended would be over the entire United States of America. Am I talking to my church? But that was not at all. The movement was also felt in Spain, in Portugal, in North Africa, and the entire Europe, even in parts of the West Indies. The great earthquake was felt there of 1755. So this earthquake, somebody ought to know, it meets Bible prophecy. It fills, it fills rather, the criteria of the earthquake that Jesus spoke about. So we have passed the great earthquake already. Wake up, Adventists. Then Jesus said, the sun would get dark. Has that happened already? Let's go. The darkening of the sun took place according to his story. It's on the screen. Write it down. Write it down and go research for yourself. It happened May 19, 1780. Are you still with me down there? Extended, ladies and gentlemen, over the entire New England. Listen, somebody. The darkness began about 10 o'clock in the morning. Are you still with me? To the middle of the next night. So the sun got dark 10 o'clock this morning until 12 tomorrow evening. 
Am I still talking to God's people? Ladies and gentlemen, fowls retired to the roost. Am I talking to somebody? Lights, candles were lighted up in the houses. Am I talking to somebody? Ladies and gentlemen, it is said that a white sheet of paper held in the air could not be seen. The cocks started crowing. Lights were lit. Somebody ought to know that when God speaks, he means what he says. Somebody ought to know the earthquake took place already. The the moon, the, the sun rather, turn, refused to shine. And the same night, the moon turned to blood. And it was not an eclipse of the moon either. Because you can only have an eclipse of the moon when the moon is full. Am I talking the church of God's church? So God in his divine wisdom, Eladokri, he waited until after the full moon to have this account happening. Somebody ought to say amen. I don't know about you. I don't know about you down there. But one thing I am glad for, Pastor Chambers, is that I can trust the words of Almighty God. I can't trust what men might say. But one thing I know I can trust every word that comes from the mouth of Almighty God because God speaks what He means and He means what He says. So the earthquake happened, the sun refused to shine, the moon turned to blood. What about the stars? Jesus said like a fig tree that is shaken and cast off her untimely figs, the stars would fall from glory. Did it happen, beloved? 1833, November 13th. Write these dates down, Adventists, because many of us seem to have forgotten. And some have no idea that these things have took place already. So I'm just reminding you, I'm just refreshing you, and I'm just telling you for the first time. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. The stars shower down so quickly and fast that it looked as though every star in the heavens was falling. When they touched the ground, they burst and drifted away. Stars were falling when the sun arose the next morning. Never before had there been such a sight weakness nor has there been since the greatest meteoric display of the ages one eyewitness told the pantograph newspaper of its time in Illinois that the very heavens seem to be on fire ladies and gentlemen, I hear the song saying, look for the way marks, the great prophetic way marks as we journey on. Saints of the living God, backslider, it is time to get right with God. It is time to fix up ourselves. It is time to walk the walk to talk the talk because something great and grand and marvelous is going to take place one day it won't be no more great earthquake like Lisbon it won't be refusing to shine it won't be the moon turning to blood it won't be the stars falling from glory it will be somebody I don't know the coming of Jesus and then John said pastor Dio Revelation 6, verse 14. After the stars, after the moon, after the sun, after the earthquake, 
Revelation is a book of the future, of end time. Am I talking to you? Because God told John, John, I'm going to show you some things which must come to pass after. So the Bible said, and the heaven did what? The heaven departed as a what? As a scroll when it is what? Rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Ladies and gentlemen, where are we now? According to Bible prophecy, we are just between these few verses of Revelation chapter 6. Somebody ought to know that the sixth seal has been opened. Somebody ought to know today that when the seventh seal is open, it will be the coming of Jesus. Somebody ought to know today that we are living between the six and the seventh seal so I'm saying to a man or a woman or a boy or a girl you better get right with my God come and do it now on the cross of Jesus you can lay your burdens down come now In this event that I just spoke about, our minds are turned to the future from looking at the past and beholding the, the word of God being full, sorry, being fulfilled. Satan, leave me alone. We, therefore, are called to look at events in the future. In the where? In the future. Which are less, which are no less sure to come. Am I talking to you? You see, just like all the star fell and the moon turned to blood and the sun got dark and the great Lisbon earthquake and the church went through those periods. Ladies and gentlemen, the coming of Jesus is certain. You didn't get the preacher. The coming of Jesus is sure. So if you're ready... He's coming. If you're not ready, he's still going to come. If you believe, he's still going to get here. If you don't believe, he's still going to get here. You and I can't stop him from coming. We stand today between the 13th and the 14th verses of Revelation chapter 6. What are we waiting for? You see many people today, Ella Dockery, they are waiting for the 18th of this month for some fest to start. You didn't get the preacher. I pass there every evening and I see uh, the preparation being done. The gate has a new coat of paint. The lawn is well manicured. The lightings are up. Am I talking to you? They are ready, putting now the final touches together. But I want somebody online to know, somebody in the building, that some fest cannot be compared to what you must be prepared for. You say there's something, an event that we all must be prepared for. I am not waiting for a new party to go in power. I am not waiting for a new president to take over America so I can get a visa. Oh no sir, what I'm waiting for according to my Bible is for the sky to burst asunder, the cloud be rolled back together and my Jesus come down the flaming sky. I hear the psalm said, we have this hope that burns in my heart. It is hope in the coming of Jesus. He will come. He will come. 
Oh, watch and be ready. He will come. You ought to know that these are the time of unparalleled solemnity and importance Adventists, sinners, backsliders. Why these moments are important? For we do not know how near we may be to the fulfillment of these things. You don't know. I don't know when the eastern sky gonna burst asunder. But one thing we can do is to watch and be ready. To watch and be ready to trim your lamps, my brethren dear. To trim your lamps with godly fear. The darkest hour is fast approaching. Jesus soon will come. And that's why Joel 3 and verse 16, the Bible said. So we are waiting for the coming of Jesus. Am I right? Come on church, talk to me down there. That's where we are. We are waiting for Jesus to come. So the Lord said in Joel 3 verse 16. I'm speaking to a sinner man today. I'm speaking to a backslider. I'm speaking to God's people in Zion. Am I talking to you? know why? Because I have realized that we as Seventh-day Adventists, most of us, we have become as cold as a freezer. In the words of Ellen White, many of us, we are just like the door on its inches. We just go left and right. We don't know what we believe in no more. We don't even know or believe that Jesus is soon to come. Because if we believe that Jesus is soon to come, our lifestyle would be different. The church would be on fire for Jesus. You didn't hear the preacher. Oh, but I hope today that God will wake us up. Joel 3 verse 16. The Bible said somebody ought to know today. What does the word say, preacher man? The Bible said the Lord shall do what? Shall roar out of where? Out of Zion. Utter his voice from where? From Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall do what somebody shall shake. There's going to be a shaking down here. But when the earth is shaken and things around us are falling apart. The Bible said the Lord. Come on church of God. The Lord will be a shelter for his people. And strength of the children of Israel. Somebody ought to know to day that when that time come our Jesus will be our shelter in the time of storm I hear David said he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty if you don't believe go ask the people in Goshen when Egypt was being given the wrath of God they they were safe and secure because Jesus was their bulwark that never failed. This world is going to shake one day. And everything around us is going to be shaken. That's what the song said. The Lord's our rock. In him we hide a shelter in the time of storm. And somebody said that on Christ, the solid rock, I stand all other ground. Hear me. You see a job that you're standing on is sinking sand. You didn't get the preacher. Your friends that you put before Jesus, they are sinking sands. Your wives or your husbands or your children that you might put before Jesus, they are sinking sands. The only thing that will last forever is a relationship with Jesus. You must be wrapped up and 
tied up and tangled up with Jesus. So when friends leave you and you hit rock bottom, you fall on the rock. Christ Jesus. Jeremiah 25, 31 to 33. Jeremiah 25, 31 through 33. The Bible said, A noise shall do what? Shall come even where? To the ends of the where? Read church. For the Lord hath a what? The Lord hath a controversy with the who? With the nations, he will plead with all flesh. He will give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. That's why today God is calling some wicked people. God is calling some wicked men because God loves wicked people. Because in your wickedness, the grace of God can be revealed. So before God destroys the world and wicked people, he's calling them. He said, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But sin a man, repent. Sin a man, repent. Because judgment is coming. The next verse said, What's the next verse I preach, man? Verse 32 said, uh, And thus said the Lord of hosts, Behold, I shall do what now? I shall go forth from nation to where? To nation. And a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. Are you still with me? And the next verse said, Ladies and gentlemen, thus and the, and the slain of the Lord on that day shall be from one end of the earth unto the other end of the earth. God is saying, They shall not be lamented for neither gathered nor burnt they shall be dung upon the ground somebody I don't know today that when God gets ready every man has to move when God gets ready good men will move when God gets ready done men will move when God gets ready war machines will move when God gets ready the world gonna be in turmoil the dead of the Lord shall be many no need of crying no need of burial no need of cremation no need of Rita no need of homily it's gonna be dread when God gets ready Jamaica will feel God's wrath. America will feel God's wrath. Canada will feel God's wrath. Russia, Ukraine will feel God's wrath. Because the Bible said, from all nations. You ought to say men down there. Ladies and gentlemen, Revelation 16 and verse 17 continues to paint the picture. Revelation 16 and verse 17. What does the word say, preacher man? Let me tell you what the word of God is saying. In Revelation 16, I am talking to a backslider this afternoon. I am talking to a sinner. I am talking to a mother that don't want to let their sons 
or their daughters give their lives to Jesus. I am talking to a wayward Christian. I am talking to a man who knows better. The Bible said to him that knoweth to do good and do it in not. It is a sin. So I'm talking to sinners. I am talking to backsliders. You don't have to feel condemned because there is still mercy with the Lord. The cross is still available. The fountain is still full of blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. All you're going to do is plunge beneath the flood and lose all your guilty stains. Revelation 16 and verse 17. The word said, Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. How you hearing the preacher? It is done. When that statement is made, you're going to have a lot of crying people down here. You think you see hopeless people yet? You wait until that pronouncement is made. You think you see people in distress yet? You wait until that pronouncement is made. It is done. Whatever is state, that statement catches you in. That's it. Ready or not. No change. No more probation. No more preaching can't help you. No more praying can't help you. No praying can't help you. So today, preaching can help you. Today, preaching can have an effect on your heart. Today, Bible study can help you. Today, probation lingers. But after Jesus said it is done, dog, eat your supper. A matter of fact, you won't even have any supper for a dog to eat. Because everything is over. Are oh, you hearing me down there? Isaiah 24 verse 19, 20. <laughs> you know everything is going wrong today? The clock stopped working up there. That is good. So I don't have to worry about the time. I can preach until I hear a voice. I preach no more. The tell in front of me stopped working. But thank God the Holy Spirit is still moving. Come on, say amen down there. The Holy Ghost is still working. Come on, somebody and say amen. I say, <laughs> I say 24, verse 19 and 20. The Bible said, the earth is violently broken. The earth is split open. The earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall totter like a hotter. Its transgression shall be heavy upon it, and it will fall and not rise again. This wicked world gonna crumble one day. This wicked world gonna fall apart one day. These great buildings that people cherish gonna crumble one day. But hallelujah, I hear Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled because in my father's heart, Ah, many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I've stopped by the day, Pastor Chain, that better day are coming. I'll stop by to tell somebody that weeping we may endure for a night. But in the morning. Oh, yeah, unattainable. Oh, yeah, undeniable. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. When all my labor are all and I 
on the other side. I will be done with the of the world. I'm gonna come by the I'm gonna war no more. I'm gonna walk in Jerusalem. I'm gonna my I'm gonna tell all the people good morning. I'm gonna my hand with the elders. Amen. This, this, Ella Odin, is where we are now. This is where we are now. We are between these two verses of scriptures. We are standing only on 127 words of scripture. Think about it. Let me say it again. We are standing on one hundred and twenty seven words of scripture. The next great event will be the coming of Jesus. You see, you ought to know, you ought to know that, as I said earlier, the earthquake took place. Uh, the stars fell from the sky. The moon turned to blood. The sun got dark. Jesus said in Matthew 24, you are going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. And you can attest to the fact that we are, sorry, I'm unruly like that, that we are hearing about wars and rumors of wars. Matthew 24 is fast fulfilling. Am I talking the truth down here? Jesus said you're going to have earthquakes in various places. And we have been having earthquakes all over. Am I speaking the truth? Right now, people are complaining about heat wave. They are dying because of heat wave. But you think you see heat wave yet? You hold on till we reach the last plagues of revelation, of revelation. Am I talking to you? When the sun is going to burn men with fervent heat. People are in Sri Lanka. People have hosted the president. You didn't get the preacher. Huh? Am I lying, Paula Chambers? They march right into the president's office and tell him he must resign. And if he don't resign, they are not going anywhere. Unrest of nations. Jesus said, you're going to have diseases, pestilences. Hey, aren't you seeing them? You tell me, count on your hands and your toes. Huh? All your fingers and your toes. How many diseases have you heard about since you were born? Countless. You need a few more hands and feet and fingers and toes. Uh, malaria. Leave that one right there. Malaria. Uh, uh, that, um, leave that one. Malaria. Cholera. Diabetes. Cancer. Uh, uh, Zik V, Chick V, uh, uh, COVID 19, chicken gonia, chicken pox, all kind of pox. And they have COVID 19, 
and, 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 and when people think we're getting a break from COVID-19, the monkey starts swinging. You didn't get the preacher. From limb to limb, from people to people. No, we have monkey pox and all kind of foxes. Am I talking to you down here? But Jesus said, these are just the beginning of sorrows. You ain't seen anything yet. The end is not yet. But I've got good news for you. Until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy, I'll carry on. Until my eyes behold the city. Until Jesus calls me home. So, monkeypox ain't going nowhere. Uh, COVID ain't going nowhere. But you see, the break in COVID is not for you and I to do what we used to do. Let me sit down here for one minute and talk to you. You see, like in Jerusalem, when the Roman army retreated, the people thought it was their time to attack. It was their time to flee. You see, COVID-19 has retreated. It is time for you to get right. You didn't get the preacher. It is time for you to buckle your belt a little tighter. It is time for you to fix up your shoe a little tighter. It is time for you to dress right. It is time to walk right. It is time to talk right. It is time to live right. Preachers, it is time to start preaching right. Because just over the mountain, in the promised land, lies an old city built by God's own hand. As my weary footsteps gains the mountain's crest, I can view my homeland of eternal rest. We are nearing home. It's time to come home. Backsliders. It's time to come home. It is time to come to your senses and realize that where you are is not where you're supposed to be. It's time to realize that you're feasting from the pig's pen and pig's food aren't good food because pigs are nasty. Pigs eat any and everything at the dockery. Yam skin with dirt. Breadfruit heart. Breadfruit skin. Dirt. Sour food. Spoiled food. Dead rat. Dead this. Dead that. So pigs food ain't healthy. Jesus has better food for you. So it's time to come home. It's time to come home, backslider. Oh, you want to understand that a time is coming past the chambers. Then the world, the world that dreams of carnal security be effectually, will be effectually broken. Kings who intoxicated with their own earthly authority and have never dreamt of a higher power than they themselves now realize that there is one who reigns as king of kings and lord of lords. The great men will be old Eladocre, the vanity of all earthly pomp for there is a greatness above the earth the rich men gonna throw their silver and their gold to the moles and the bats for their silver and their gold it can't save them in that day the chief will forgot their brief authority and the mighty men will forget Get their strength uh, when Jesus uh, burst uh, the eastern sky. Uh, those uh, who never prayed uh, to him uh, whose arm uh, could bring salvation uh, will now rise uh, in agonizing prayer to the rocks uh, and to the mountains uh, to say, fall on us uh, and hide us uh, from his presence. Uh, but too late, uh, too late, uh, Praying days will be over. Too late. The rocks can't help you. The rocks need an hiding place. Too late. Fain or gladly would they now avoid reaping what they have sown 
by a life of lust and sin. Gladly would they now shun the fearful treasure of wrath they have been heaping upon themselves against this day. Gladly would they hurry them, bury themselves and their catalogs of crimes in everlasting darkness. So they flee to the rocks, to the caves, to the caverns and the fisheries which the broken surface of the earth now presents before them. But it's too late. Someone will knock when the door is shut. Shall you? Shall I? Someone will call and will not be heard. Shall you? Shall I? Someone will enter the pearly gates by and by. Shall you? Shall I? One day. Men will not be able to conceal their guilt or escape the long delayed vengeance. God is slow, but he's very sore. God is slow, but he's very sore. And before judgment comes, here is the appeal today. Isaiah 55 and verse 1. Here comes the appeal. Here comes the appeal today. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. He that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Come, buy wine. And milk without money and without price. Jesus paid the price. Jesus paid your water bill. Jesus paid your food bill. All he asks you to do is to come. Come buy. You don't have the money. You're broken. You're messed up. You're wounded. You are rejected. You feel dejected. But come. Come. Revelation 22. In verse 17. My last text today. Revelation 22. And verse 17. And the spirit. And the bride. Say come. Let him that heareth. Say come. Let him that is a thirst come. Whosoever, whosoever will, if you are willing, come take the water of life freely. Let me read this, then you sing. Hear me. The great controversy is over. Sin and sinners are no more. The entire universe is going to be clean one day. One pulse of harmony. Pastor Chambers, they didn't know, going to beat through the vast creation. From him who created all, flow life and light and gladness through all the realms of illimitable space. From the minutest atom to the greatest world. All things animate. And inanimate. In their. And shattered beauty. And great joy. Will declare. God. Is. Love. Where are we now? We're almost there. Oh, my brother. No, you're out there. In all your burning and heavy load. Down life's highway, oh, 
passes through I know you're crying But you'd be lost In your soul But where you're empty God can fill you That's where we want you to meet us. Let's dive in like little children do. Let our troubles wash through the fire. He'll wash you clean. Yes, he will today. pray for somebody today. I want to give somebody a chance as he sings to come home before a woman a man a boy a girl Jesus is calling you today. Don't you hear him calling you? You're down there today. You want to say, preacher, pray for me. Pray me up, preacher. So I can get on in before it's too late. You want to say, preacher, I want to be ready. I want to be ready, preacher. Preacher, man, I want to be ready. I want to be ready. Pray me up. If you're down there, not yet a Christian, walk on down to the altar. Pastor Chambers is getting ready to pray for you. We're going to pray for somebody today. You're down there, you're down there. Leave your seats and come today. Come while it's praying time. Come while it's praying time. God bless you, my sister. Come while it's praying time. Come, open the door of your heart to Jesus today. God bless you. Is there one more? You're down there, you're down there. I know you're there. You've heard the word, you've heard the word. That the next great event in the world will experience will be the coming of Jesus. When the eastern skies burst asunder. When the cloud will be rolled back in the scroll, there will be no probation. There will be no more crusade. There will be no more preaching. There will be no more singing of appeal songs. There will be no more altar calls. There will be no more baptism. It's over. It's over. God bless you, young man. God bless you, my brother. Just come a little closer. Spread out for me. Make room for the others who are coming. Make room for the others who are coming. Come on down, my sister. Today is the day you need to make a decision for Jesus. Backslider. I'm calling you too. I'm calling you today, today, today. Today God is saying. If you hear my voice. Harden not your hearts. I'm seeing some people down there who I know need to walk on down to the altar. Judgment is coming. You have a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. You have a heaven to win and hell to lose. You have life everlasting to gain or eternal damnation. Is there one more down there? Hear God calling somebody today. 
What are you waiting on in your seats? What are you waiting on in your seats? Don't die in sin while grace is available to you. Don't die in your sins after hearing such a message. After hearing that the earthquake has, has gone. The moon has turned to blood. The sun has refused to shine. The stars fell. Jerusalem was destroyed. The next great thing will be the coming of Jesus. Stand everybody. Stand everybody. Stand everybody. Pastor is getting ready. But I believe there are others down there. So hear the preacher this afternoon. Hear the preacher. You don't have time. You're beside somebody. You are beside somebody. A child. An adult. You are beside them. You know they want to come to the altar. But by themselves they are afraid. Can you look at who is beside you? Look at them in their eyes. You can see the request saying, I want to go to the altar. And hold their hands. Hold their hands. And walk with them to the altar. Help somebody to make it in. Help somebody to come before the door is closed. Help somebody to come before probation is closed. Help somebody before Jesus say it's enough. Look beside you members of the church. There's somebody beside you. If you don't do it, I'm going to walk down there and pick them out and walk with them to the altar. Because I want people to get to glory. But sometimes people need help. When the devil is holding them, they need help. Are you hearing me down here? You know the backslider in church. You know who used to come to church. They are standing there. Walk with them to the altar. You know who has not yet said yes to Jesus. Walk with them to the altar. Walk with them. Do your part. Help somebody to cross over. There's room at the cross. There's room, my sister, come. Yes, you. Yes, you. Yes, you. Walk with her. You're holding her hand. Walk with her to the altar. Yes, my little friend, don't look behind you. Don't look behind you, my little friend. Walk with your friend to the altar. Yes, you in the white. Don't look to your right to your left either. You're holding on to her hand. Walk with her to the altar. Take that child hand. Walk with her to the altar. Yes, the one in the black. That's the one I'm talking about. Come on. Come on. Come on. Church, since you don't want to walk with them, pray with them. Pray for them. Pray that the Holy Ghost will give somebody a breakthrough. Earnestly. Tenderly. Jesus is calling. There's somebody else down there. There's somebody else. There's somebody else. Time is gone on our, on our side. But the Holy Ghost, the preacher, there's somebody else. The Holy Ghost, the preacher, there's a man down there. There's a man who thinks he knows it all. There's a man down there, preacher. Tell him time is running out. Tell him, preacher, he don't have time. Tell him his time is short. Call him, preacher. So, sir, you know who you are. You know who you are. God is calling you today. He's calling you from certain destruction. He's calling you today. He's saying, come on down, sir. Yes, sir, you know who you are. You know who you are. You're on your high horse of pride. But God is saying, get up. Humble yourself so I can exalt you. You're weary today. 
Come home, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, oh sinner. Hear me. I don't want to prolong the appeal. But hear me. I don't want to leave you today without giving you a proper chance. Without giving you the right opportunity to get on in. To get on in. To get on in. Pastor, the door is about to be closed on somebody today. You're still in your seat. You're still saying, I don't have to go to the altar. But let me ask you this today. What if you die and the next face you see is the face of Jesus? How will you stand in that great day? Will heaven be your home or will hell be your home? The eastern sky gonna burst asunder soon and Jesus gonna come but before he gets here he's calling oh sinner there's a mother down there pastor Dyer there's a mother with, this, with, this, with her child and that child wants to give her life to Jesus or his life but mother you're saying he or she's not ready yet but today I'm saying, walk with your child to the altar and give them to Jesus. A member of the church, your child has requested baptism. But you say they are not ready yet. But you mother, you father, you are preparing for heaven and leaving your child unprepared. Walk with your child today to this altar. Pastor is coming to pray. A minute more for somebody. A minute more for that mother, for that father. To walk with your child to the altar. Come before it's too late. It's praying time now. It's praying time now. But praying days are going to be over. Listen to me at the altar. You walk to the altar not for sure. But you walk to the altar because you want to make a decision for Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. They are coming. And you must make a decision for Jesus. You can't leave here without making that decision to go all the way in baptism with Jesus Christ. People are preparing for some fest. You need to prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ. And you can do that through baptism. Members of God's church, we too need to be ready. We too need to shape up. We too need to live right. Adventists, we are nearing home. Adventists, the signs are fulfilling that Jesus is soon to come. So Seventh-day Adventists, it's time to get close to Jesus Christ. So down there, members of God's church, you want to recommit your life to the Lord. You want to ask him to rid you of everything unlike him. And to fill you with his Holy Spirit. Just raise your hands where you are. That's your desire. It's my desire. It's Pastor Dyer's desire. It's Pastor Chambers and his family's desire. And so say all of us. Lord, we want to make it. We want to see you when you come, Jesus. Oh, sinner. It's about your eyes are closed. Pastor, before you pray, there's a young lady on the outside. You see that, that young lady at the door? That young lady at the door. I was looking for her. She was sitting right here earlier. She was here last week. She walked down to the altar. My sister, you need to hurry up. I don't know why God pointed me to you, but you need to hurry up. So since you're holding her hand, you need to walk her down to the altar again. 
she's not safe on the outside. Walk with her. Come on in. Come before the ark door is closed, my sister. Get on inside the ark door. Walk with her. Don't be so stubborn, my sister. Walk with her. I don't know why I'm pleading with you. I don't know what I'm pleading with you. But up to me, I want to plead with you. But the Holy Ghost is calling you. The Holy Ghost is calling you on the inside. The Holy Ghost is calling you to the altar. Because time is not your best friend. Walk with her. Walk with her, please. I'm begging. I'm pleading. I'm imploring. Somebody walk with her for the, to the altar for me, please. Somebody walk with her to the altar. When you hear the preacher pleading so long, don't take it for granted, my sister. You see how long I'm pleading with you? Church, pray for her. Pray that God will loose the chains that is holding her feet out, outside there. Ask God to remove the spirit of pride. So she can walk on in. Jesus loves you now. Jesus loves you. It is pain in my heart. To see I'm calling her. To see the Holy Ghost calling her. And she's still on the outside. Come on down to the altar. You, yes. You. Come on down to the altar. Walk that way and come my friend. Yes you. You too. Come on down to the altar. That's what the altar is for. Come on down to the altar. This is where you get the breakthrough. Not in your seat. Not in your seat. You're going to walk for Jesus. You're going to walk and show the devil that you want to get on on the inside. That you want to get the glory. God bless you, my friends. God bless you. The last call for her. The last call for her. And then pastor is going to pray. The last call for you, my sister. One minute for her, pastor. One minute more. What more? What more do you want him to do? Don't stand in my way, Stuka. Don't stand in my way, my sister. I'm speaking to that young lady. My sister. Yes. You know why I'm picking on you? Because Jesus loves you. That's what you're saying? Why is he calling me? Why is he picking on me? I am not picking on you. I am trying to save you. Jesus is not picking on you. He's trying to save you. Don't you know they picked on Jesus for you? Don't force her. Don't force her. Don't force her. But let me talk to her. They picked on Jesus for you, my sister. They spat in his face for you. They slapped him across his cheek for you. They placed the crown of thorns on his head for you. They nailed him to the cross for you. They picked on him for you. But church, you have seen I've done my part. I have pleaded with her. And I have called her. I leave the rest in the hands of Jesus. But mark my word. Mark this word today. Time is not on her side. Time is not on her side. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. Oh, loving God. And our great Father. The lover of all mankind. 
Oh, the one who sent your son Jesus into this world to die on behalf of your people. We come before you this moment having listened to the spoken word, the inspired word, having listened to your man's servant, reminding us of the times we are living in, where we are now in history, having seen all the fulfillment of Bible prophecies, oh God, we are now standing on the threshold of eternity, and you need right now, God, to save somebody who is still lingering. And so all those who have come to the altar, these your children who have responded to the call, we call on you now on their behalf and pray, God, that you will seal their decisions for you for eternity. Lord, Rochelle is standing right there at the door. I know you love her. Former young people's leader, I know you have not given up on her. And so, God, I pray that she will respond to the call and surrender before it is too late. There are many others out there, Lord, who once walked with you. I pray that you will lead them home. To come home before it is eternally too late. God, we know you are still in the saving business. And you have no pleasure in seeing your children being lost or even died in their sins. But God, your blood is still pleading. It is still sufficient. Your grace is still sufficient to save somebody. And so we ask, even as you have anointed your preacher to present such a powerful and profound word, that you will speak the anointing on somebody's life today, that you will break the chain, set somebody free, break down every barrier, cast out every foe, and deliver somebody. We know the devil is upset right this moment. But oh God, I pray that even as he is coming through like a, with a flood, that you will raise up your standard against that old serpent. That he will know that we know he has lost the battle. He is a defeated foe. And you have won the battle for your children today. That is why those who have surrendered and those who are standing ready to go all the way into the watery grave of baptism, can declare victory today because you have won that victory. And Lord, please give somebody else that victory today. And may you continue to bless this program, bless this campaign, that at the end of it, Lord, many will surrender. And Lord, we look forward to that day when you shall come. When we shall go marching through the pearly gates, when we shall sing the songs of Moses and the sweet lamb, God, make us ready. Remove everything that is unlike you so that we can be ready for that day. In Jesus' name, amen.
let me invite the Bible instructors to join me. We have five beautiful children of God coming home today. What do you say? Amen? Amen. Amen. And so I will be asking you just three questions. Just three questions. If you are in agreement, you can indicate by the raising of the right hand. If not, you can say nay. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord? And do you desire to live your life in a saving relationship with him? Amen. Do you accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the statement of fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with these teachings? Amen. Final one. Do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ to be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward by your personal influence, tithes and offerings, and a life of service? Amen. Amen. Church, we have all seen them. And so at this point in time, let me ask a baptized member from this church, the Norwood SDA Church, to move the motion so that we accept these lovely candidates subject to their baptism as members. There is such a motion. Seconded. All in favor. Raising of the right hand. Against. Same sign. It is carried. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks at this time for the move that you have made. We thank you that the preaching of the gospel is still alive and well. We ask you to overshadow your children even now. May you baptize them with the power of the Holy Spirit, Father. This journey, it's a rough one, loving Lord, but with Christ in the vessel, they can smile at the storm. We pray, loving Lord, that as their shepherd, you will be with them. You will lead them in the path of righteousness, provide for their needs according to your riches in glory. And we pray, loving Lord, when you return as King of kings and Lord of lords, uh, to gather your jewels from all across the world, loving Lord, these your children will be a part of that great multitude uh, that will stand with you on the sea of glass. This is our prayer and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, let God's children say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Yeah. 
here is a vehicle 4023 HS. You are blocking somebody. I'm asking those of you who park along here and other places that you are blocking persons to please move your vehicles so that people can exit. Thank you very much. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the poor of grace divine. May my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in God. time we have in the water a young lady who has decided to walk all the way with Jesus Christ. She's saying goodbye world, I stay no longer with you. Rashida Gibson and today she will go all the way with Jesus Christ. And so my sister because you do love Jesus Christ based on the profession of your faith as ministers of the gospel, we do baptize you in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the sweet Holy Spirit, and let God's children say, Amen. Next in the water, we have Diana Bokenan, a brand who has been plucked from the fire, and she's saying all the way with Jesus Christ, no turning back. And so, my sister, because you love Jesus, based on the profession of your faith, as ministers of the gospel, we do baptize you in the name of the Father, name of the Son, and the name of the sweet Holy Spirit, and let God's children say, Amen. Yes, the Lord says, young man, I call upon you because you are strong and you are not too young to serve the Lord. And so we have in the pool at this point in time a young man, Stephen Dehaney, and he has decided to go all the way with Jesus Christ. And so based upon the profession of your faith as ministers of the gospel, we do baptize you in the name of the Father name of the Son and the sweet Holy Spirit, and let God's children say, Amen. Amen. 
have a little rose in the pool, Rosalie Keem, planted in the garden of the Lord for service. She's very young, but she's saying, Lord, I'm not too young to serve you all the way. And so, little Rosalie, based on the profession of your faith, as ministers of the gospel, we do baptize you in the name of the Father, name of the Son, and the sweet Holy Spirit, and let God's children see. Amen. And 2258JH, we're asking that you move your vehicles, you're blocking, somebody would like to leave. At 7860HV and 2258JH. So we have in the water at this time Stephanie Dehaney. She has decided to walk all the way with the Lord. Ro Rosalie Keen. Rosalie Keen. Sorry about that. And so, my sister, based on the profession of your faith as ministers of the gospel, we do baptize you in the name of the Father name of the Son, and the sweet Holy Spirit, and let God's children say, Amen.
the best thing we can do in this life is to serve the Lord. The Bible says, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. And even if you did not remember him while you were young and you are up in age, it is still available for you to serve the Lord. The Lord is here and he's saying, I am calling on you at this time to remember me. No matter what you might be doing, no matter your occupation in life, the Lord is calling you. And so if you are here today, before we close this wonderful service, you want to say, Pastor, just pray for me so that I can make it a part of the kingdom of God. If that's your desire, let me see you raise the hand. Amen. Amen. Father, we come at this time as we close off this wonderful service, as we celebrate your mighty acts in creation and in redemption. Father, like the hound of heaven, you are calling your children from all walks of life. You are pulling them, Father, from the highways and the byways. You are calling the young, the poor, the rich, the free, and the born, the black and the white, because you died for us on Calvary's cross, and your shed blood will not go in vain. And so we pray that you will cover your children now under your blood. For those who raise their hands, Father, probably they did not walk to the altar. We pray that you will shield them. We pray that you will protect them, Father, until they say, I yield to the power of the Holy Spirit. For those who have just given their lives to you, May you continue to guide them and navigate their pathway until we see you face to face on that great getting up morning. Until then, loving Lord, may you keep us, may you guide us, for we pray and say thanks in the sweet, precious name of Jesus Christ. And let God's children say, Amen. Amen.